KWAD MBC News. I'm Alan Jang. And I'm Carrie Meheran with the special MockCon report. As the mock convention draws to a close, the four candidates, Radical Nuveen Dingra, Liberal George Zhu, Conservative Greg Barton, and Ultra-Conservative Mark Stambaugh, prior practical solutions. Let's hear what our candidates have to say. <laughs> We sent reporter Christine Shea to interview radical candidate Nuveen Dingra. Here's what she found. Uh, the war in Iraq is very controversial in the United States and even more so in Europe. Do you set the war as a legitimate way to end tyranny and terrorism? No, not at all. That's what I just basically said. The war, like what kind of war is it to end tyranny and terrorism when the United States Army is using weapons like white phosphorus on Iraqi civilians? Like, how do we s expect to stop enraging the civilian populace of Iraq when we're, when we're, like, using these weapons that burn their flesh away? We're just going to keep enraging the youth and we're going to create more terrorism by having this military presence in Iraq. So it's clearly something that's not there to, to, to end terrorism because we're, we're inciting more terrorism by going into Iraq and we're inciting more hatred against the United States by creating a bunch of little Osama bin Ladens, or, like, all around Iraq. So... To end terrorism, we shouldn't like this. This this is this is clearly a war that has other motivations behind it. All right, let's move on. Do you believe that Iran is secretly building nuclear weapons? I, I really don't know. I'm not a satellite. How would your immigration policy address the challenges faced by the national government since the uh, September 11th attacks? Well, the challenges are ones that the government set up itself. Like, basically, the government creates its own challenges by saying that or by Having the mentality that all Arab men wanted to blow up planes and like creating this no-fly list and all this other, all this other stuff. So like the the, the challenges are what the government cr has created itself through its racism and xenophobia. Um, okay. Do you think attitudes on race have changed very much since you were growing up? Well, when I was growing up wasn't very long ago, so not really. Failings of American education system affect no minority the most. What would you do to address this problem? Well. Conservatives are going to throw a lot of money at the education system. Liberals are going to throw a lot of money at the education system. But what we really need to do is restructure the education system because we can throw lots of money at things, but it's not really going to solve it. So what we need to do is, on top of like actually giving more money to poor, poor impoverished communities because like because they're underrepresented in government, government officials don't feel accountable towards these communities. So we need to correct that problem of of economic inequality, and then with that money, then politicians can feel more accountable, feel like they have to be more accountable to these groups. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, what we need to do is encourage better teachers to go into the profession, like encourage better, more qualified people to go into the profession of teaching. Because insofar as we pay our teachers like really really bad salaries, lots of people aren't going to want to become teachers so we need to we need to purport teaching as a much more respectable and honorable profession than it is considered today in America and at the same time we also need to we, we when when restructuring education systems within urban ghettos we need to provide more practical applications to the kids lives that they can use and that they can use every day and they're going to be a lot more interested in going to school they're going to be a lot more interested in graduating and we're going to, and, and they're going to end up being a lot more productive member of society, and it can it can help to end the cycle of poverty. What do you personally do to reduce your energy footprint? Uh, I haven't showered since homecoming week. Reporter Hank Chang sat down with liberal candidate George Zhu to discuss his stance on the issues. Tell me about your plans and dealing with terror. Okay, so terrorism. A lot of people are scared of it, and I believe that the government should do all it can to protect our people from terrorism. But, like I was saying in the Patriot Act, we shouldn't let the government abridge our freedoms just to stop terrorism, because then the terrorists win. We don't want the terrorists to change our way of life, right? America was founded on freedom, and so if, if we try to abridge that freedom just to get rid of terrorists, then the terrorists have already won in what they want to do. All right, so then what do you plan on dealing, dealing with the situation in the Middle East? Preemptive strikes are only okay as a last resort and only if there's irrefutable evidence and only if we have the backing of the international community. We should not go on one or two man crusades just so because we have, oh, maybe they have some kind of yellow cake and they're going to use it to build some bomb to bomb us. 
So do you believe there is racial equality as of now in the U.S.? Um, I definitely don't believe that there is racial equality and there are still gender, there is a gender gap and also the um, sexual orientation. Um, there's, there's still a bias in American society against certain ethnicities, against people of sex, certain sexual orientation and against women. So one of the things that I want to change if I get elected is to decrease this gap and hopefully promote equality between all members of society. So then, what do you plan on doing with the environmental re regulations? Okay, I believe that the current regulations are not strong enough and also they have way too many loopholes for the corporations to slip through. So, I promote stronger regulations and also to, pres to preserve the environment for future generations and s to prevent corporations from destroying our environment. So, what kind of alternative s energy sources do you plan on using when you become elected? Well, sir, um, there are currently many different alternative fuel sources that we are looking into. There's solar, there's nuclear, there's um, hydrogen fuel cells, but I believe that we're not doing enough to pursue these alternative fuel um, sources. Like Right now we depend way too much on oil and it's crippling our foreign policy because we need oil from other countries. America only produces like 20% of our 1 billion gallons per day of oil need. So we need to make sure that we have another source of energy lined up so that we don't have to depend on the Middle East for our oil. Alright, so then, do you have any final closing statements or anything you feel really strongly about? Well, um, I believe that the most important issue during this convention is equality for every single individual. And I think that the liberals are the only ones who are willing to fight for this equality without endangering the majority. The liberals are the only ones that can help America stand on its own two feet. All right, thank you for your time, George. Thank you. We now go to a clip of reporter Amy Chu interviewing conservative candidate Greg Barton. So, Greg, how's your campaign going? It's going very well. If you notice, we're the first group to have our posters up in the government classrooms and around school, and I attribute that to the large amount of help I've had from many students in the senior class. So, overall, I think my campaign's going quite well. Good. Um, so, earlier today, we interviewed the liberal candidate, George Sue. He said that America be, should stand on its own two feet. What's your response to that? Well, I think George is skirting the issues a bit and resorting to petty insults when he should be focusing on what the real issues are with this politics game. But also, between you and me, I think George is stepping into shoes that are a little too big for him. Okay, well, speaking of the real issues, it seems that you have an eye-for-an-eye eye stance on the death penalty. Don't you think that killing a murderer would simply spur more violence from opposing sides? That argument lets the criminals take control of the government. If we say we're not going to murder someone with the death penalty because they're a murderer, then we're giving control to the criminals, and we can't have that. I think we need to show the criminals that you know, we're not going to tolerate what they're going to do. If they're going to kill someone, they're going to have to pay the consequences. And if that means that they're going to have face the death penalty, then that's how it should happen. We can't allow for, you know, the government to lose control over the safety of our citizens. Okay. And you also say that, um, or speaking of foreign policy, um, you say that there's no international regulatory agency with the power to punish states that transgress international law. Isn't that the job of the United Nations? It is the job of the United Nations, but the United Nations is only as good as the countries that support it. You know, for say, North Korea or Iraq, if they're not in the United Nations, then the United Nations doesn't do anything to stop them. They don't care because they're not a part of it, and that's why it's our job to go in and stop them if need be. So Greg, um, how do you feel about the ultra-conservative's view? As a conservative, I think the basics of their views I agree with, but they go a little too extreme in some of the policies they call for, such as the Gay Exportation Act or other views of that matter. So do you have any closing statements? All I'd like to say is that in this campaign you've seen views from all different sides of the political spectrum. I warn you not to be swayed by what you think is funny or amusing, or maybe even scary. But you have to think about what really would be the best thing for America. And that's the conservative way. So Greg, how do you get your hair to look all nice and shiny? 
I use American Crew shampoo and conditioner for men. Keeps my hair silky smooth. Thank you, Greg Barton. No. Thank you. Intrepid reporter story. Lana Tong He's demonstrated great bravery eye. in her willingness to once again interview the controversial ultra-conservative uh, candidate Mark Stanbaugh. coyote, but he made me proud. He, uh, he pecked out both of the coyote's eyes, and from there it was, it was no contest. He, he owned it. And I, was, <laughs> I was so proud of him. I, uh, if I'm president, my second act after exporting all the homos will be to award him a medal for a valiant service. So, Mark, we meet again. How's the campaign going? Oh, just swell, Lana. I've received a lot of support from a lot of new players lately. Apparently, an astounding majority of the government classes do not have enough credit for this year's mock convention, and a surprising number of people have asked me to give them some kind of menial labor to perform to give them enough credit for this year's mock convention. But I really don't have enough labor for all of them, so I'm planning to get lynched after the convention, but I'll get the last laugh, and other than that, it's going spectacularly. Okay, good. So in 1995, Jerry Williams was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison under the Three Strikes Law for stealing a slice of pizza. Do you agree with this application of, of the Three Strikes Law? I do. Jerry Williams was a thief three times. He has no other occupation. Some thieves who steal one slice of pizza, they're night watchmen also, and they actually contribute to society. This Jerry guy, all he did was steal pizza, and he will not be missed. So, um, the following year, William Palmer was convicted of assault and battery for beating and strangling a, strangling a transgender woman. He received two years in prison. In your opinion, who should have received a heavier sentencing and why? Is the American judicial system flawed? I believe they should both be put to death. I believe that the fact that the victim was a transgender woman was irrelevant and overplayed and simply because he murdered another woman he should be put to death just like Jerry the pizza thief. Okay. Do you see any parallel between your party's self-righteous belief and Hitler's elitist pro-Aryan propaganda? No. Hitler knew who his allies were and hated everyone else. I know who our enemies are and hate everyone else. We are totally opposites. Is the current immigration policy too liberal or too strict? How do you think it should be changed? Do you encourage banning all immigrants, including those seeking educational or political asylum? Do we still allow immigrants into our country? Yeah, we do. Then it's too liberal. I think we've got plenty of our own people, and we're growing our own people, and we don't need any input from other countries. I think the best and brightest of the other countries left their own countries for our country long ago and now the only people coming over are the uh, people who have been exiled from their own countries for being worthless bags of meat. That is why you do not often achieve very high st uh, class standings in the United States. If these immigrants are gone, will the American economy take a hit? Who will mow our lawns, do our dishes, dry clean our laundry? Don't upper crust Americans need these immigrants to do their dirty work? I think we've got plenty of lower crust Americans already who could do that work. I mean, if you've ever been to San Francisco, you'll see all the bums lying on the street. Any of them would gladly mow your lawn for a quarter. It's ridiculous that we are paying the immigrants to mow our lawns when we've got enough labor in the United States going to waste. Did you know that if you make $50,000 a year, you're already considered in the top t top quarter, per quarter percentile of American society? Do you think the government should play a role in improving the lives of the nation's poor? If yes, how should they do it? I think no. I think the poor should be responsible for improving their own lives. My grandfather came to this country, and this is a true story, uh, came to this country uh, not speaking English, wearing only the clothes given to him by the Red Cross and the Army after he was rehabilitated in an Army hospital. And uh, I think if he can get along as well as he has, uh, other poor people in much better starting situations than he was should be able to get along fine. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mark, for your time. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. Good luck with your campaign. We take you now to footage from the ultra-conservative Apple Pie Fair and Beauty Pageant, staged last Wednesday at the Bell Tower. The Radicals, too, took a stand, but not for baked pastries and Christian values. 
They sought to raise awareness for the millions of Americans living in poverty. As emotions heightened, tension between the groups was palpable. Mission High School's mock convention, more than a chance to socialize and make posters, presents the opportunity to evaluate the intellectual arguments of each ideology. Remember, never stop thinking, never stop questioning, and never hesitate to let your voice be heard. After all, it's your future. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're so funny, Alex. I don't know.